So I'd like to call up uh, Dolly Creighton, if she could come up to help us out with the um, next presentation. She'll be our facilitator for it. Okay, thanks for coming. Mr. Wakauksipi na mayaki. Greetings, friends and relatives. I'm going to try to be very formal. I'm not used to being in a, on a camera. This is making me a little nervous. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just, uh, <clears throat> I wasn't on the agenda, but all of a sudden I was this morning, so I'm not quite prepared. Uh, so I'm going to try my best in, uh, in just sharing uh, some information about this gathering and uh, <clears throat> what our intentions are and why all of you are here. Um, so, and I'm going to be speaking in Blackfoot, and I'll, and I'll try to interpret what I said, because this is what we're, uh, to me, this is what we're here for. This, this initiative for this gathering has to do with gathering and honoring our ancestors through innovation and vision. It's about understanding the content of our language. And it's about, the project is about gender equality. And what that has to do, how that relates to our culture, who we are. So we're here to create awareness and share information. So I guess how, what I'd like to start uh, is just about sharing. Again, I'll speak in English, and then sometimes I will speak in Blackfoot, and I'll try to interpret what I said. I guess for most of you know that we have some, uh, all of you are here, I guess you're here because you're supposed to be here. And those who are not here are not supposed to be here. That's how I see it. At the head table, you see our, our elders, our knowledge keepers, and that's what I refer to them as knowledge keepers. Our knowledge keepers, to me, I can refer to them in English as their walking encyclopedias. They have knowledge, they have information that has been transferred to them from their ancestors and also in through their lives, through their lives, their learnings, and now they become our teachers. So, so in, in uh, understanding our elders' knowledge, as it's transferred or it's transmitted intergenerationally, from generation to generation, it, and it, this is done through storytelling. Our knowledge keepers don't, they don't share their knowledge and their information by lecturing us. They will tell us a story. That's how, that's how it's been, it's transferred. It's, I had an uncle, Frank Weaselhead, and he asked me at one time, Kito Megaksi Pumakip. And I said, uh, to them, No, I don't even, I'm not even there yet. Jeez, I'm not even in that position yet. In English, he said, Have you ever transferred? And I said, No, because to me, transfer. In English language, it means to transfer a sacred bundle, to transfer, to become in a sacred society, or as a pipe hold. That's how I understood bummakshin. And I said, no, I have never done that. And he said, no, you have. So if you interpret bummakshin, it is to transfer. So 
in his, he explained it to me is, you transfer knowledge every day of who you are to your children, to people you're in connection with, to people you meet. You share your knowledge and your information. You're transferring knowledge. So that was quite a learning for me. So I think about that when I, when I hear the word transfer, transmitting uh, knowledge intergenerationally to our descendants, to our children, people we know. So, so the amount of shared knowledge, I'm going to say today, it's, it's declining. And that's because the loss of, of a holistic connection and cultural contacts, which undermines the integrity of the elders of our knowledge keepers. See, the numbers of elders who have who have all this knowledge and information, uh, they have what we call how we transfer our knowledge is through, uh, it, it's oral knowledge, it's storytelling. We don't read it in a book. We hear it, we hear it from our knowledge keepers. So when you say that oral tradition is, is a resource, as our knowledge keepers pass, when they pass away, we, we need to preserve that, such information. And that's to, to me, that's the most important thing. And when I say it's diminishing, that's what I'm talking about. The last research I did was in, in, our, in, uh, in our community, Ganawa. There's two, about 250 some people who are over the age of 65, and that's diminishing. They're the ones that have all this knowledge and information. And when they all pass away and that knowledge is not shared, who's going to tell us those stories? I think about that. So I look at myself and I say, oh my goodness, I better, I better start learning about all this because when all my knowledge keepers here, my elders here, when they go, I'm going to have to do that. So I need to do my own homework. I need to, I need to listen to those stories. So when I talk about storytelling, about teachings, I'm talking about oral tradition. And that, that, that articulates or that brings human history human practices of communication of our culture, of our traditions, and visual understanding of the past. We heard Terry tell us about that from her perspective, from her teachings, her learnings. So oral knowledge really it generates a document of, of events and communications that, that brings together cultural practices such as personal and practical pra experiences and percep perceptions of traditional life. So now we talk about knowledge keepers, elders. Well, who are they? What is their role? Well, what I was taught, that elders are chosen as knowledge keepers, and they're given the responsibility of passing on their knowledge to the future generation. However, to be called a knowledge keeper in our society, an elder must be recognized and respected for their, for their selfless contribution to their people. And they must be valued for their knowledge gained from generations of stories and their own life, their own life experiences. Elders are the educators of our children, our youth, our adults, and our communities. They're storytellers and historians. And each elder possesses an invaluable, distinct 
oral knowledge that encompasses wisdom, perception, innovations, and practical experiences associated with our communities. So what I'd like to do is share why we're here, why we have these knowledge keepers here, and why we have all other people here are supposed to be here. So I'm just going to make reference to that. Some of our people that are here, um, I'm not going to call or refer to them as our clients. I'm going to refer to them from this perspective as our students. And we're talking about transferring knowledge. When you transfer knowledge, there's a teacher and there's a student. And this is how I see it. So these students that we're working with in our program that participate and attend our program at Wellness Center are there to take this knowledge and this information from our staff with all their knowledge and information. But most importantly, what we're trying to promote in our program is to promote what Terry was talking about, and, and uh, because we believe, because of who we are, we believe that that's the foundation of our way of life, is who we are, is our identity. So, This is the foundation of our, some of our program, is bringing in our, our, our knowledge keepers to share their information to, their, to our students. And they tell stories, and they share their, their life experiences. When a knowledge keeper shares that information, he's not going to tell you, this is what I specifically want to talk to you about, and it's called identity. He's not going to say that. He's going to tell a story. He's going to share his experiences. And it's up to you as a student to take something from that story. Each of us are different. Each of us will learn something. What I learn from that, that information will be different from the person sitting next to me, what they learn. And that's the, that's, that's the uh, to me, I think that's the most beautiful experience that we share with our, with our knowledge keepers. So just very quickly, uh, I'm not going to take a lot of your time, uh, just to kind of give a, give a, so we're all talking the same language here, um, not technically, but um, uh, we're talking about a topic, and I'm going to just talk about culture. In the English dictionary, culture is defined as a way of life of a group of people that separates them from other groups of people. Culture is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. So in our culture, we make, we, we refer to culture as kipata sinna. So these groups of people were all put on this planet with their own culture. We were put here with our own culture, our own way of life, nipata and, and And really being specific, kistuna na sikseketsita biisin. A way of life in a Blackfoot way. In every culture, it consists of number one is language. Any culture, language. Then it consists of values. Values are what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. That's what values are. And in, in our in our culture, we have some very strong values. 
That's what guides us in how we live our lives. The next one is from those values. Then we have beliefs. We have belief systems. And I'm going to refer to as belief systems. Some of we can refer to them as philosophies, as stories. Those beliefs are a common one would be when we refer to to us, it's just a BUP. Because to know that seat bound to make that cube. You should not just a beat seat. Ah, Mr. Togi, it's bad that you know it's a book, Togi. That's a belief. We believe in a higher power that we were put here. We didn't just appear here like this. We were put here for a purpose. Those are our beliefs. In our beliefs, in our value, in our philosophies, our belief systems, we have stories about where we come from, who we are, how we were created, creation. We have our own stories. We have our own astronomy about the sun and the moon and the stars and the galaxy and the, and the, the dipper and the morning star and the evening star. All those are beliefs. And there are stories behind all of those. It explains creation. We have beliefs. We have beliefs that every... Every, all that is created that we see was put here for a purpose. All the different creatures, the ones in the water, the ones that walk on the ground, the ones that fly. And as you hear some of the elders pray, they make reference to those. Kistunno Aam So these stories and philosophies, and, and, and when we hear them, it explains and it talks about where, all, where we come from. It talks about our astronomy of where our medicine pipes come from. What we believe in, those are beliefs. So I talked about language, talked about values, talked about beliefs, belief systems. We believe that we all come from a higher power. In other cultures, they call that higher power different names. But we call that higher power giver of life, our maker. Beliefs. Then we have traditions and customs. So traditions and customs are what are our activities or methods that we practice because of what we believe in and because of what our values are. So we practice these traditions, these customs. Simple traditions that we saw this morning of our elder that he smudged, that's a tradition. That's a custom. And if he went on to explain why he used sweet grass, that's a tradition. Other, other cultures have their own traditions and customs. We have traditions like agogats in our sun dance. We have other customs like like ceremonial sweats or the sweat lodge. We have our dances, our arts. 
those are all traditions and customs. How we dress, those are traditions and customs. And in each of these traditions and customs, we have protocols. There is, if you want to call them rules, there are certain things you can do and you can't do. This is the proper way of doing it. So language, values, beliefs, belief systems, traditions, customs, and attached to that is protocols. That's what every culture has. Unfortunately, something happened to our people a long time ago, and the intention was to, to, uh, to take that, and that's who we are, is our culture. So any culture, that's who we are, our identity. And like I said, unfortunately, our ancestors experienced some other culture came and taught as a new culture. Not in a very good way. And because of that, we're kind of, we're kind of lost. I'm going to say lost. And you may that so so. And you may so what to just a beat, thank you. We started to lose who am I? I think that's where we are today. It's been about seven generations ago in this country when that happened. Maybe in our community, it's fifth generation. And I say that because my own, my own life, my grandparents, my great-grandparents were not affected. My grandparents, they went, my grandfather went to residential school. My parents went to residential school. I went. I have children. I have grandchildren. I have great-grandchildren. Six generations in my life. Transferring that of who I am. It was interrupted, huge interruption somewhere. But I will count my blessings. I'm grateful. Personally, I didn't, I didn't lose my language. I still speak my language. That is my first language. But I learned the language of that other culture. I learned their way. I learned their values. I learned their beliefs. I learned their, their stories. I learned their traditions and their customs protocols to these. But I had to go out and find mine, those specific. I know my beliefs. So we're, some of us are caught in between. Some of us are totally. And to me, this is how I see, just in my own personal life and in, and where I, in, my, in my work, in working with our people, not just with Kanawa, but I've worked across Canada and I've visited every province, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. I worked in Alberta with Health Canada, and I visited all First Nations, Inuit, and Métis, and I identified that we have a lot in common. Who we are, and our losses, and our, the impacts and effects that had on us. And today we see them big time. So I just want to talk about, we're talking about identity. When we're talking about healing, I use the word healing in the same English word as change. Something happened to us and we changed. And this is where we are. So, so when we can start to understand ourselves and say, this is not who I want to be. That's who I am, and that's where I want to go. It's another change. So if I use the word change in the same context as healing, to heal, to change, to change from this to that. And to me, when we talk about that change, the first thing we look at is 
poema. I know Dr. Fox talks about this too, but as I've listened to the knowledge keepers here, I know Charlie here, he can, he can speak both languages and when he shares that information, he'll share it in English. And he asked our stu his students, and Terry has said that too, he asked his students, and I say that too, to identify that going from here to here is the most important question is, who am I? Who am I? Where am I going? What do I want? Those three questions, I think, are really, if we can answer them to ourselves, who am I? And when we say, who am I, in that other culture, if somebody asked me, who am I, I would say, I am Adelaide Creighton, better known as Dolly, and I'm from the Blood Reserve, and I have three children, and I have uh, seven grandchildren, I have great grandchildren, I work for Kana Wellness Center, and I make this much money, and this is what my role is, and this is where I live. But if I was going to say, who am I with my own people? This is who I am. I'm going to say, okay, nistuvakok siipina mayak. Numhtuutukaen. Ninna anstat saan. Niksista anstat. Vänistä vastaamaki. Ninna uksista anisteeni maka istu. Uksista anisteeni seipiaki. No mohtuu sitä piia käpukeeks. Jään. So in Blackford I just said this is who I am. These are my parents. These are my grandparents. I come from this clan. I'm from Ghana. It's all you need. So there's a difference between who am I. In another culture, you say, you say our identity makes reference to uh, what I've done in my life, what I own. Uh, I, 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 I live here, I have two houses, I have two sections of land, I have 200 head of cattle, and I drive two trucks, and I, uh, I am, the, uh, I am the, uh, the regional director, and um, that's how in another culture that would be when you ask them, Introduce yourself. But when we come to our culture, this is how we introduce ourselves. That is who we are. So this is what to, to my colleagues, our team from Ghana Wellness Center, and this program that we're doing our students where was Hassan? He's kind of our lead role for this program. And our students know who he is. This program that we have is to transfer knowledge, different types of knowledge. Hassan studied the brain, how the brain works and how it affects us. He's called a psycho psychiatrist. He's also a, an MD, a doctor, so he studies the, the human being, the body and the brain. We have, we have a psychologist, and she studies uh, the behavior of human beings. We have mental health therapists. Most of them are, 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 are social workers. They have BSWs, and they, they've studied social behaviors of human beings. All of these people, they're there to share their information, and it's called counseling and therapy for people to understand who am I. 
So for me, the way I see it, just in my work, in my, my own work experience, my own life experience, I, I, like I said, in the, the white world, I would tell them, well, this is my background. My first profession is in nursing, then in social work, then in mental health therapy. then in psychosomatic therapy, which is studying the body-mind communication, how, how the human being, how all those connect mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. That's my latest and another culture degree. <laughs> so, so we all together in, this, in, this, uh, in the wellness center, this is what, this is what we do to help our students, how to help themselves. And to me, the most exciting part of this is what I just explained, uh, is knowing who am I. Because as human beings, we're all looking for understanding. We're all looking for under, just understand me. But first, I need to understand myself. Why am I the way I am? And once we can once we can identify that, then we can say, ah, now I know why I am the way I am, and I don't want to be that. I want to be that because that's who I am, and I want to change. That's called a healing journey. Each of us have that decision to make. And I think those questions of who am I will answer that for each of us. We find the answers. So I just wanted to share that because our, our, our knowledge keepers, they have all that information. They've been there, done that. And we're all walking our own healing journeys. We're learning. Every day, the people we meet are our teachers. We're also teachers. When people talk to us, they learn something from us and we learn something from them. So in this, in, in, in this, why we're all here is all that is to talk about our identity. And our knowledge keepers are going to be here to, to share that. Because in that culture of who we are, our language, our values, our beliefs, our philosophies, our stories, our traditions, our customs, and the protocols that are related to these traditions and customs, these are ours. One of my teachers once told me, one of my teachers once said the, the blood Ganawa are, are proud people. They're, they're a very strong people. We, I can say this, he said, we, Ganawa, are one of one people that we haven't lost who we are. We have not lost, we have totally lost our language. We still have our beliefs. We still have our values that we try to teach. We still have our beliefs and our, our, our philosophies and, our, and all our customs and traditions. We are one nation that has never lost our Sundance Agogats. We still practice that. That's a very strong tradition. And we look at life from a holistic way. We don't just look at the mind or the emotions. We believe that belief, we believe that we're a whole person. And you hear us when we say that, when we pray, we'll say, 
It means a whole person. We are a whole person, we're human, we're human beings. Other cultures didn't see us as that. Somebody just referred to us as creatures not too long ago, but I <laughs> But anyways, we we are human beings and that's what we believe in. We are we are made up of a of a we have a mind, we can think, we have emotions, we have feelings, we have a physical body, and we have spirit. And to us that's that was very confusing because in our beliefs we believe that we have spirit, and that spirit comes from our creator. That creator is a part of us, it's who we are. It's not out there in the sky, in the clouds somewhere, it's right here, a part of us. And that's what gives us strength, that's what gives us life. That spirit is your breath of life. And when that spirit decides to go back home, you no longer have that breath, you die. I have to say that. And we also believe that not us that we have spirit, we believe that everything we see that we don't see has spirit. Itapiwasu. In our Blackfoot language, we have no such a word as it. When we make reference to, to all of creation, they're alive. Amo mistis, amo nina. Amo akiwa, they're alive. Because we believe they have spirit. And that's why we treat them with respect. In our culture, that was our values, that we respect all of creation. We have traditions in showing that respect. When we're gonna take from Mother Earth, you don't just go and you, you pluck out a piece of sage or sweet grass. We, have, we do a little ceremony, you give tobacco. And you thank Mother Earth for putting that there. You're going to use it now. Those are traditions and customs. So there's so many, so many of these things that this is who we are. And 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 um, and for in this program, we're trying to promote that as the foundation of healing. The past is the past. Something happened to us. But we can't stay there. And the only way we can, we can change those negative impacts and effects that we see today because of our confusion of not knowing who am I. We're trying to be somebody we're not. And we're, we're tested by this mainstream society, all their customs and traditions and their way of life. And we're, we're using, we're following that way of life and yet we don't know, why am I doing this? It's creating chaos in my life. So we're trying to teach that to our students, my colleagues, and the knowledge keepers. And this is why to me, this gathering and in our culture, part of our beliefs we are all human beings. In our culture, way back, our traditional ways, every human being in a family, in a, in, in a, in a clan, in a community, they had a role. Everyone was important. Everyone contributed and it was called survival. In order for us to survive, everyone pitched in. Everyone had a role regardless of who they were, but they, they know who they are. They were important. The men, the women, the children, the grandparents. We're talking about gender. They had a role. I asked around, and they said, yeah, they had a role. It was mainstream society that came and started to label, not only label us, but all their labels. of the, what is it, JLBT or whatever, ALBCDE, you know, <laughs> I, I can never remember that, but, but they label us. In our culture, we didn't label or judge each other. Everybody was important. 
in black foot mata yochki tsim mohiks, mat sik kistotu awhiks. We didn't treat them differently. We didn't think they were different. We didn't think they were weird. They're human beings. They were part of the family. They're part of the community. They had a role. They were important. That was our culture. So maybe I'm talking too much, but I just wanted to bring that out too. So we're all talking the same language in this gathering. And what we want to promote here uh, is, is, is that to our students. And some of us here are students. I still consider myself a student. I don't profess to know everything about anything, but I have my teachers. So we're here, our whole life, our journey is learning, is learning, is learning. There's a story when I was in my studies in psychosomatic therapy, we have, we study how, how, how we think and how we create our own emotions because of what we think and how those emotions start to affect our physical body. That's psychosomatic therapy. So how we're thinking, we create those thoughts come from our beliefs. Those thoughts come from our identity, who we think we are. And they create emotions and those feelings, whether they're negative or, or, or positive. But I learned in my studies that human beings have 65,000 thoughts a day. And 85% of those thoughts are from yesterday, from the past. Maybe I'm going to take it easy on you. 95% of those thoughts are negative. That's where we are today. So we have the power in our culture. Our power comes from within our spirit, who we, where we come from. We were given that power, that, that power to make choices and to think. There's no other being on this planet that has that power to think. Yes, other other, if I may say, creatures, they, they live, they do things by instinct. We have instinct too. But we can think and make decisions. We can make choices. So our thoughts become our emotions. Our emotions become our intentions. And then we, our in intentions become our actions. And that's, that's, that's what we become. So we create. We have that power to do that. But somehow we lost that, that power. We want to take it back of who we are. So I'm not here to teach you psychosomatic therapy, but it's, uh, it, 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 that's, that's what it is. And I could re refer, relate that to our way of life. When I started to take this course on my fourth year, I thought, how come I already know this? How come I resonate with this? Then I realized that that's our way of life, only in a different con concept, different language. That's who we are, and the mainstream society calls, calls it quantum physics. <laughs> but that's what, that's what I learned. I compared the two. So right now, <coughs> am I out of time? Right now, what I'd like to do is just... Uh, is just uh, in, in, in psychosomatic therapy, we also study energy. And this energy is many names, consciousness. It's everything we see or we don't see is energy. You know. So <coughs> we all bring here our own energy, the energy in this world, in this room. And in our culture, we call it spirit. And that's why consciousness, that's why one of our traditions, our customs, our beliefs, when you go somewhere, when you're going to leave, you call your spirit. So you don't leave all your stuff back there. You gather yourself and you go home. Otherwise, if you, if you keep doing that, one of my elders told me that another, this other culture, they do that. They go here, they go here, they, they, keep, they leave their consciousness, their energy all over the place. <laughs> so 
So you always stay whole. That's one of our traditions. So I guess what I wanted to create here, we're all here in this room, we all come here with our own energy, and we're gonna bring it together to a common, a common understanding. Terry's presentation, and I'm trying to share, what the elders are gonna share, a common purpose why we're here, as students, as teachers, as Sikhsikaitsitapi, as Kano. So, so what I want to do right now is just, uh, I already prepared our students. In, in our culture, we say, uh, we say, Nistuakok. And Nistuakok is a powerful word. It means I am. I am. Well, I'm not saying this is what they call me, this is how they label me, this is what I own. It says I am. It's a powerful word, I am. This is who I am, Nistuakok. And my Blackfoot name, I use it because that describes that, na that who I am has a story to it. And it gives me guidance and direction in my journey in this life. Each of us have that, we have our own journeys. And in our culture, we have that Nistuakok. When we say Nistuakok, and then we meet somebody, we'll say, the Gagistu. In English, they say, my name is, and who are, what is your name? But in Blackfoot, we'll say, this is who I am, who are you? So, so I'm just going to say that, and, and our students, they know this. So when I'm going to ask them, the gagistu, they're going to tell you. Okay, the gagistu. Okay, nitanako, nistoko, papima set maka. Stuart Nook, Nakuts Namaka. Mr. Gook, Toby First Judge. Uh, what do I say? Mr. Stuart Gook, Clark Mills. Stuart Gook, Horse, Red Crow. Mr. Nistua <laughs> Goak, Matumina. Nistua Goak, Elaine. Nistua Goak, Tamara. Nistua Goak, Dana. Nistua Goak, very good dagger. Okay, it's going to go to the top. 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 It's going to you know me. You still go get it some work. It's still go Nelly Eli. It's still go Nikki. Thank you, thank you. Just wanted to just uh, share with you, uh, our students. This is what they're they're learning, and to us, this is the this is the foundation and basics of what what the uh, our knowledge keepers and what my colleagues from the Wellness Center in this program what we want to promote and create that awareness. Uh, I know this afternoon we'll have some more um, discussion with, uh, with with our knowledge keepers. In, uh, in this identity of our roles and how this relates to gender of equality. <laughs>